yeah, like many teachers get their, their students to do at young ages to draw a scientist. And I'm embarrassed to say as a female scientist today that I drew um, a man in a lab coat. And um, even though I loved science and I knew that I was good at it, there was a disconnect between that and achieving high standards in science and then feeling like I could actually be a scientist um, as a grown up. My name is Jessica Polarczyk and I'm a coastal geologist interested in long-term records of earthquakes, storms, tsunamis, and how they impact coastlines. On December 26, 2004, an earthquake off the coast of Sumatra triggered a series of tsunami waves. These devastated 14 countries, killing over a quarter of a million people. No one had ever seen anything like it. The Indian Ocean one definitely caught people by surprise. Um, in historical times, there was no um, predecessor, um, so a lot of people didn't know what a tsunami was, um, let alone to expect something like that. The amount of information that we have is really restricted to the last several decades, if not centuries, and that lies in actual instrumental records, um, things that we're actually measuring in present day, um, and historical texts that can date back um, several hundred years ago. But earthquakes can happen thousands of years apart, so to look further back, we actually have to dig a bit deeper. So the geologic record is everything beneath our feet. So if you were to dig a trench or take a core, there's a lot of different sedimentary layers. So underneath us right now is soil for the most part. Um, and if you dig below that, you'll find evidence of um, environmental processes um, that have impacted the earth over time. And a lot of these processes um, create very specific sedimentary layers. And those layers, when you can recognize them, give us a lot of information about past environments. Inevitably, what you find is two terrestrial or land-based sedimentary layers, organic rich, darker types of um, sedimentary layers. And then you have this very strange, out of place um, marine sand layer that looks very different than what's above and below it. And so you know that it was um, not meant to be there by normal processes. And so when you look at the microscope, you see all these marine sediments that were deposited by the tsunami. And those marine sands contain what you would expect to find in the ocean or on the beach. Seashells, corals, fish bones, and what I like to study are foraminifera. Foraminifera, or foram for short, as I like to call them, are single-celled organisms that live in coastal or marine environments. So if you can imagine um, a very small microscopic seashell, that's in a nutshell what forams look like. Some of them look like donuts. Some of them even look like they have belly buttons, innies and outies, which are different species. Um, they can have spikes and they can have chamber arrangements that are really interesting. They can look like little swirls and you can learn a lot about the environment that they lived in and how far they were transported by tsunami wave or storm surge. Using these, Jessica is able to reconstruct a timeline of tsunamis. Um, how often they've occurred and the actual intensity of the event. So how does a third grader who draws a male scientist grow up to be an expert in her field? I would say that the majority of the people that either taught me or that um, mentored me or that I worked for were all men, white men. Um, but I was very fortunate to have um, a few females sprinkled along the way that um, made a really important um, impression on me. And certainly um, lessons that I learned from them decades ago are ones that I carry with me today. My name is Jean Percival. I'm a research scientist at the Geological Survey of Canada in Ottawa. Uh, my research at the Geological Survey is to work on uh, clay mineralogy and I'm especially interested in uh, environmental geochemistry and the problems associated with abandoned mines. When I was in high school, I, uh, I competed in science fairs and um, I really wanted to do something over and above growing crystals in my basement kind of thing like I had done before. Well, Jessica was a very precocious high school student that reached out to me many years ago in about mid-90s. She told me that she was interested in looking at the potential for clay minerals to act as a, as a barrier for our landfill sites and as they come into contact with water, they swell and act as an impermeable barrier. So we met, she came to my laboratory, and I instructed her on how to use the X-ray diffraction in order to do her mineral analysis. 
mind-blowing experience. All of these, you know, a full-fledged lab um, with all of these big pieces of equipment. Probably the most memorable part of, of all of that was when the award ceremony started, she showed up. That meant a lot. That's how mentoring works. I think it's the point where you look at professors or whoever you're sort of admiring and you realize that they're normal people just like you and they came from exactly where you came from and if they can do it, you can do it. 